Now, I say we'll start with the incident, but actually there was so much that went into this before, which put those two championship contenders together for third position on lap 24. It was a weekend of lots of twists and turns. First of all, the Mercedes super quick in Friday's qualifying. They're one, two on the grid. It's actually Bottas who's, uh, who's the fastest. He starts the sprint from the front, uh, but Hamilton's there as well. And they got a bit of a margin back to the Red Bull, which was slower in, uh, in Monza. But the sprint had its own drama. At the start, Lewis Hamilton, too much wheel spin. He basically dropped the clutch paddle just too far and, uh, and it caused an enormous amount of wheel spin for him. Lost a load of positions, which meant ultimately he'd start the Grand Prix in fourth place with Verstappen on pole after uh, Valtteri Bottas was uh, sent to the back of the grid with engine penalties. But the drama didn't end there. It should have been from that point a, a more comfortable race for, uh, for Verstappen. But Daniel Ricciardo got a great start in the McLaren. Hamilton came through at the, uh, at the start. The two were side by side. And we have this moment early on with Hamilton in, in, in third looking to try and pass Verstappen in second in a sort of similar move actually to the one that he pulled on uh, Sebastian Vettel in, uh, in 2018. But this one didn't come off for Lewis. Let's have a look at it then. On board, hard tyres for uh, Hamilton, but didn't really make a difference at this stage. He's still got the grip and he comes alongside Verstappen. The two are really side by side. Max has his nose ahead. Then they're really neck and neck into the corner, but this is a tight one. And I think there's just a tiny bit of contact there, just a brush of the wheels. And, uh, and there's no way that, uh, that Lewis can hang on around the outside of this one. And you can see with where Max ends up there, there's not a chance to, uh, to stay around the outside of this corner and fight it out. So there's only one thing for, uh, for Lewis to do, and that is to bail out over the kerbs. Now, that's kind of the way that racing goes, particularly into a faster chicane like that. But in, in any chicane, the driver on the inside sort of has the, uh, the opportunity sometimes to just force the issue. And in that instance there, uh, Hamilton had no option but to cut the chicane. He couldn't carry on fighting it out into the second corner. But he ends up, if we play this through, losing a place to Lando Norris as well, who nearly passes Verstappen for good measure. If we watch it on board with Verstappen, you see he has a little look in the mirrors. Knows Hamilton's there. Now we can see Hamilton there as well. Turns it in. Slight miss of the apex on the left-hand side, but he's carrying the speed, basically not allowing Hamilton to come around the outside. And uh, we get to here. He's made it absolutely clear. There's no space. And, uh, and Hamilton has to go across the, uh, the runoff area. Max makes the corner. Lewis doesn't. And uh, it ends up costing Lewis a position. There's rights and wrongs of, of whether this is fair racing, but this is the sort of thing that's allowed. And, uh, and that's what happened on lap one. Put Hamilton back to fourth, Verstappen still in second. Now they've got Lando Norris between them as well, which causes a bit of a buffer. And then the next bit of drama, slow pit stops. First of all, it's uh, Verstappen and it seemed to be human error. And uh, basically the, the wheels went on, the pit stop looked absolutely fine, but the mechanics now have got to press a button to indicate that, uh, that all is fine. It used to be pretty much automated, now they've got to press a button. The, the mechanic on the front right didn't press it and it cost Verstappen about eight seconds in the pit stop. So it was, it was a hugely costly error and, uh, and it cost him the place to, to Lando Norris and it gave Hamilton the opportunity to come in from his hard tyres, switch the mediums and jump them both. Both Norris, who he'd actually just overtaken on track, but also uh, Max Verstappen. But then Hamilton had a slow pit stop, four seconds, not quite as costly but it meant that instead of coming out ahead of Norris and Verstappen, he came out behind Norris and side by side with Verstappen into turn one. And this is where the drama starts then. So we ride on board with Max Verstappen. You can see Norris ahead on the left and Hamilton there clearly emerging from the pit lane at lower speed on the right. As we come into the corner, Lewis is quite clearly ahead, but as the pit lane exit line ends, he can now merge to the left-hand side and he knows that this is gonna be a big fight. He's just lost a bit of time in the pit stops. That timing was crucial. And this is the moment of the Grand Prix for both of these two who are fighting it out for the title. So we run through, Lewis moves to cover a bit on the left, but there's still a gap for, uh, for Max to go for and he goes for it using a little bit of the green painted stuff on the outside as well, turns it in. And at this point, there's room there for, uh, for Max to try and pull this move off on the outside. What he wants to do here is to carry the speed right around the outside to then have the inside for, uh, for turn two, whilst Lewis will be more like there. So that's the opportunity he's going for, and he knows this is a one shot really. At the, at the very least, he needs to keep this fight going to the next chicane, but as we've seen already, it's harder to overtake there. It's a faster chicane, it's more open, and it's easier to push someone wide. 
So Max keeps it going, and at this point, it still looks like it's on the cards to just hold it around the outside, but the squeeze is coming from Lewis, and he's not done this immediately. And in fact, Max's car here would be the positioning of, uh, of his car as well on the first lap with Lewis out here somewhere. And that was, uh, made it very clear that there was no way around the outside. But Lewis has given Max a chance here, but it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter. And at this point, it's almost on still. It's super, super close. They're pretty well side by side, although Lewis has got his nose up, up uh, a little bit further ahead. And then the crucial moment comes, basically the room runs out for, uh, for Verstappen here and he's up onto that orange sausage curb. That's a raised curb. And whilst they're pretty well side by side at this point, it's the raised curb which suddenly lifts the, the front of the Red Bull off the ground. And now you can see Verstappen turning the wheel hard, uh, hard to the left, but the front's now in the air and he's bouncing and uh, he's gonna wipe into uh, to Lewis. And the two of them are out on the spot. So it's a really tough one to call this one, I have to say. We see on board with uh, Hamilton. Now look at him immediately, head pointing straight to the, uh, to the mirror over there. He knows, oh, always on pit lane exit you're doing that, but particularly when you've had a slow stop because you know the team are pitting you because they think there's an opportunity to come out ahead. That's why they've pitted Hamilton basically earlier than expected because they suddenly sense this opportunity after Verstappen's slow stop. So he's looking in the mirrors and he keeps looking all the way, coming out the pit and then he's blending over to the left-hand side, opening up the corner. And now already we can see Verstappen's trying it on, uh, on the outside here, but the room is going. So Lewis just modulating the steering slightly and it's just tightening that, uh, that corner into turn two for, uh, for Max in there. Then he turns into the left and, uh, and they crash, and that's, that's that. It's a really tricky one, this one, because that first chicane, it's an overtaking place. It's the best overtaking place on the circuit, in fact, and Monza is not that easy to overtake on. Everyone thinks it is because there's long, fast straights and big braking zones, but most of the circuits, some fast corners in there as well with the Scari and the final corner, Parabolica or Alboreto corner. Um, the Lesmos are difficult to follow, so it's either the first chicane or the second chicane you've got to do the job. Second chicane is actually quite fast as well. There's no DRS into it. So it's all about that first chicane. And that was the key moment between the two. Um, we've seen incidents in the past at that chicane and very similar ones as well. And we've seen similar incidents from those drivers in that position as well. So let's start with Max Verstappen in 2017. Here he's trying to pass Felipe Massa early on in the Grand Prix. Now he's coming around the outside and you can see clearly he's further along the outside than uh, with Massa here than he was with uh, Hamilton. They're wheel to wheel. But then once again, Massa here is going in hot and he's ushered Verstappen right to the outside of the track. This is a halfway house between the lap one Verstappen move and the, uh, the lap 24 Hamilton move here. He's gone in hard Massa, but they're pretty well wheel to wheel. So we get to the point here where Max could easily at this point decide not really making that one, I'll bolt across that uh, runoff area. And that's the big moment of contention really in the incident this time as well. Could Max have gone over the runoff area? Well, in this one, he chooses not to, like he didn't on uh, Sunday as well. And uh, we come in and Mass has really forced him off the road. You can see how tight it is. And then uh, Felipe on this occasion is also turning in a little bit harder to the left. Quite frankly, that bit is less relevant because once again, look at the sausage curve here. Verstappen's actually hitting it even more than he did on Sunday. And uh, so he knows all about this one. Look, he's fully lifted up, wheels are off, and he's into uh, the side of Massa. They carry on, a bit of a rub, and, uh, and they get away with that one. But it was interesting to see how this could happen, and it could work on board with Antonio Giovinazzi at the start of the Grand Prix. So Giovinazzi comes, gets a great start in the Alfa Romeo, another strong qualifying, decent sprint, and uh, he's coming to the outside of uh, Charles Leclerc. Now this is a very familiar position then, similar to, uh, to Verstappen. Leclerc on the outside, Giovinazzi goes for that space. They're side by side. Maybe uh, Giovinazzi is slightly further along the outside than, uh, than Verstappen was. But then the space here looks like it's running out as well. It's gonna be a tight one. And you can see the line of uh, the cars ahead going onto that curve. This is looking like it's a little bit tight for Giovinazzi around this moment, but he keeps his foot in there and again, brave one from, uh, from Giovinazzi, super close, and somehow he's just skirts the edge of that curb. And if he was just slightly wider here, 
had his wheel there, he's also lumping the kerb, and the space that Leclerc leaves there is actually is similar to what, what Hamilton did. It's enough if the car on the inside is not on the kerb, but as soon as they're on the kerb, it's, uh, it's game over. Here, Giovinazzi just has enough margin to stay off the kerb, and uh, they come through side by side, and, uh, well, he at least survives for another corner. So comparing the two, it's really difficult to see the big difference, but it's, uh, it's a really, it's a subtle difference here. So you've got closing speeds, but then coming in, Max slightly further back, but he's carrying the speed, and now we get in here, and uh, he's slightly further back, Verstappen, but he's also got more space at this point compared to Giovinazzi, who's further wide, and you can see that as we play it through. Giovinazzi at this point is now looking similar back from, uh, from Leclerc. They're in a similar position, but actually Giovinazzi's got less space than, uh, than what Verstappen had at this point, but uh, they both keep their foot in, and it's at this moment, I think, that's the, the critical phase. That's still a very, very similar position, but Giovinazzi's now got his left front off the circuit, and it's looking like surely he won't make it, given what we know with, uh, what happened with Verstappen. But it's this point, then, that you can see the trajectory of the cars is just slightly different, whereas uh, Verstappen is pointing pretty much to the kerb, Giovinazzi is pointing just off the kerb, and that's the subtlety of this, the reason that Giovinazzi could turn the car more in this phase was presumably because he was going at a lower speed, cars all around and you're jostling for position a little bit more. You can turn the car a little bit more. The squeeze from, uh, from Leclerc, Leclerc could also turn the car a little bit more. And they've basically both managed to open up the corner very slightly. Whereas Verstappen here, they come in at higher speed. Max is coming from full racing speed into turn one. He's then had to correct the steering for, uh, for Lewis and um, at this point now, he's not turned the car enough to avoid that, uh, that curb there. So we play it through, and there you can see the difference there now comes to fruition. Verstappen's on the curb, and Giovinazzi isn't. One has a big crash, and the other one uh, carries on for another corner. So overall, it's the sort of thing that, for me, could go down as a racing incident. It's two drivers pushing very hard, neither really giving an inch. Hamilton's forced a big squeeze through the first corner to the apex of the second, but Verstappen has basically gone brave. He's tried to pull off the move and uh, in hindsight, of course, should have bolted across the, uh, the corner because the squeeze was too much and the space wasn't there, but they're fighting for the championship here and they're desperate to beat each other. I think if they were racing anyone else, I think they might've given a bit more room and probably gone across the chicane, but it's, uh, it's one for me where it's so marginal in a, in a really tight wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle. If I had to say, I think that probably Max could have, uh, could have aborted it. We definitely could have aborted it a little bit easier. And he's not quite alongside. If he was further alongside here, if he was just up there, I think it would have been a bit more clear cut and, and he would have earned that space a little bit more to the, to the apex of turn two. So I think there's a, there's a little bit of that. And there's a point about here where he must know it's getting very very tight and is there just about a bailout room for him to suddenly go off there maybe but it's really really late in the day and he's been forced there by hamilton so if i had to say i think certainly more of the blame probably does lie with verstappen as the stewards also decided but i would have been happy with this one given how close it is the big squeeze from both both running into uh, the apex of turn two. Probably would have said a, a racing incident, but the stewards decided that it was Verstappen predominantly to blame and uh, gave him a three place grid drop. That's what you get when you don't leave the space. Well, that was a look into the dramatic incident of the race that got everyone talking between Hamilton and Verstappen, but there was incidents of plenty further back. McLaren took an incredible win. Antonio Giovinazzi's race didn't last much longer than that and uh, other incidents as well for everyone else. Perez's penalty, Vettel forced onto the grass. Look at it on F1 TV.